Dad. Dad, wake up. Dad. <sighs> Dad, it's me, Ben. I know who you are, Ben. You're the only other guy that lives here. Yeah, I just heard a noise outside, out the window. Well, you know what that is? What? That's one of the millions of people that lives in the city. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I heard someone is trying to break in, I think. Yeah, you know what, Ben, you're probably having a bad dream. Yeah, I'm telling you, I heard it like four times in a row. Just listen. Yeah. I... Oh, you I, never I, get it when you need it. Wait, I, I just heard something. Yeah. Yeah, do you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. It was metal on metal. Well, it sounds like someone's trying to, like, get the window lock open. First of all, are, are all our doors locked? Well, yeah, but it's the window that sounds oh, like right. it's the problem. That's a good point. That's probably why, why they're using the window, because the doors are so locked. I don't want to die, Dad. <laughs> Uh, maybe we should call 911. Is that it? Uh, that's information. No, 411 is okay. information. Okay, call 911. I'll call 411. Okay, but let me do all the talking. Well, maybe if you call... Wait a second, I think, I think they're actually in the apartment. Wait, wait one second. Oh, my God. Boy, I certainly have... I have no regrets about not owning anything of value. Dad, why are you talking so loud? I don't just want... I want to try to discourage them from coming... From looking around. It's a good thing they haven't passed legislation about automatic weapons in the city. Man, it was a long, hard day on the police force today. You're not kidding. Woo! I'm gonna go to bed, Lieutenant. Oh, man. It's almost like it's pretend. <laughs> yeah. That we're wearing these <laughs> uniforms for no reason. Why, why Just because we're crazy. Why do I sleep with my revolver on? <laughs> oh, my huge gun. Did that work? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's either. make them some coffee. Let's just get robbed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the hell with it. Help yourselves! <laughs> Take whatever you want! Just lock up when you're done. All right, Dad. Uh, yeah. Now call nine one one. I'm telling you, Laura, it's just very scary when you realize that someone was actually trying to get into your home. Doctor Katz, are you overreacting? No, I'm, I don't think I'm overreacting. I think I'm. I think I'm reacting. I think that um, you know somebody break, trying to break into your home. Did they break in? They weren't able to actually get in. Well, that's good. Yeah. But that's only because Ben and I acted with such speed and we were both so vigilant. No, what really happened? Ben woke me up in the middle of the night. He heard a noise. Dr. Katz, you've never been robbed? No, I've never been. I've never been robbed in my entire life. Really? Yep. You seem like such an easy target. Thank you for saying that, but, I'm, but apparently I don't appear that way to the, to, the, uh, to the criminal community. Well... To me, it's just totally humiliating. The idea that they could have got rifled through my, my personal belongings. Yeah, but they didn't. Yeah, I like that part. Mm. Doctor, you know, I don't know very much about you at all. I mean, but uh, I guess that's part of your... Uh... That's part of the, the whole therapy game. And I, and I use the word game instead of scam. What, do you have a wife and kids? Well, you know what? My family's really off limits in this session. I see, sure. That's fine. What, do you have a son? You look like you have a son. I do have a son. Yeah, I can tell okay. by the bags under your eyes. What's he? How old is he? How old is your son? <sighs> He's a, he's grown. How old? He's 25 years old. So he's sleeping through the night, huh? Such a cute age. I don't know. My parents now, it's weird to watch them get old. Mm -hmm. My mom's, she's getting pathetic. How so? She's so embarrassing. We go to restaurants and they're calling everybody's name the other night. And every single name they call, my mother said, Lou, Lou, go, go, go find out if that was us. I said, you'll be able to tell when it's us, Mom. They'll use our name. Yeah. Of course, that's like a law of nature. The longer you wait for a table in a restaurant, the more everyone's name starts to sound alike. As the blood sugar level drops, your hearing becomes affected. After 45 minutes, they say, Clark, party of four. Clark, right away, there are 15 people up there. Excuse me, did you just call Dombrowski? They're not listening. My dad's big on using everybody's name. He believes in making people feel important by using their name. So if someone comes up to our table at a restaurant, I'm Don, I'll be your waiter. Okay, Don, hi, Don. Don, can we have warm butter? Don, you know what? I'm going to don my sweater, Don. See, I used it in another context. Yeah. I, I guess I shouldn't uh, shouldn't make so much fun of my parents at this point. I'm uh, I'm a parent too. I have three children, and it's just amazing. Um, you know, you have that first kid, and it's just magical. You think, oh my gosh, that's the most important thing in the world. And then that second kid comes along, and you panic. You think, how, how am I going to love someone as much as I love that first one? And then, of course, the second child is born. And the truth is, you love that second child almost as much as the first. I mean, it's really close. It, I mean, it's almost it's almost negligible. But I mean, you know, it's the first one's real special, right? Third one is, uh, third one is, a uh, third one is, um, you hope the third one's easy to clean.
Ben? Yeah, Dad. Are you on a secure phone? I'm on a, am I on a secure phone? Yep. Yeah. Just want to make sure no one's listening to this conversation. There's a good chance I might not even listen to this conversation. Have you taken my advice to change the locks? I called the locksmith. Uh -huh. I got the locks changed. Right. Then I called another locksmith uh -huh. and got them changed again. That's good thinking. Did you put on an extra deadbolt? There's three locks and a chain lock now. And what about bars on the windows? Well, Dad, I think that's going a little too far, don't you think? And I want to call a home security company. I want them to put in an alarm system. I'm only going to give the code to, to me and to you, and I'm not even sure I'm going to give it to you. But, Dad, I mean, honestly, if, even if the guy had gotten in, I think I overreacted last night. Yeah, when you wrestled me to the ground? <laughs> yeah, well, I had to wrestle somebody. I, I was thinking today, Dad, that maybe um, the best thing we could do beyond locks and bars on the window would mm -hmm. be get a pit bull. You know, that's not such a crazy idea. You know, because, um, you know, maybe instead of a pit bull, we could just get a recording of one of those dogs barking. Mm. Because that way we wouldn't have to walk it. Yeah, that's true. And we wouldn't have to, well, we'd still have to name it. You know, if we don't get a pit bull, though? Poodle? Mm, I wouldn't mind a hamster again. I know it won't help uh, deter criminals, but they're so lovable. Hi, Dr. Katz, how are you? Uh, I'm okay, how are you, David? I'm, I'm okay, I'm a little uh, anxious, a little harried. You know, one thing that I remember from the last session was, uh, I think it's, it's kind of a bad sign when your therapist says, uh, that's a little bit more information than I wanted to know. <laughs> well, I think you misconstrued what I was saying when I said that. Well, that is, what, what, what do you mean? That's what you said. Wait, wait, how did you interpret that? That m maybe I was uh, giving you more information than you wanted to know? Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh. So you're the youngest of five, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, I'm the oldest of three, but... Well, well, being the oldest, David, has in many ways shaped who you are. Really? In, in what way? Many ways. Huh. Okay, noted. Noted. Oh, last week you started telling me about the new business before we ran out of time. It's called Dave's Classy Pizza. And how does that work? Oh, well, for like an extra uh, $50, you get your pizza mm -hmm. delivered to you in a limousine. Right. Yeah. And that's the tagline. It's limo fresh. And then, you know, a butler comes out and, your pizza, sir. You know, it, that's the Australian guy. And then the English guy's like, hello, governor. Here's your pizza. You know, it depends on what you can pick it, and then there's, like, a French maid. You know, it's up to you. It's a, it, it's and you a think there's a market for that? Oh, yeah, because people like stuff delivered, and they like classiness, you know? And I thought of combining the two. Classy delivery. <laughs> I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope it works. I mean, uh, in, the, in the future, it hasn't worked so far. I've actually lost a, a significant amount of money. But, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I think you're onto something with that idea. And this thing is going to pay off big, Dr. Katz. Big. I, I wish listen, you... Listen, listen, listen. Big. Dr. Katz's office. Hi, Laura. It's Ben. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, uh, Laura? Yes? Have you noticed anything strange about my dad? Could you be a little more specific? Well, you know, ever since uh, the break-in, he seems to be really paranoid, you know? The attempted break-in. Right. I call it the break-in. <laughs> Okay. I just skipped the attempted part. Well, he has been acting a little bit weird. Well, I mean, you know, I've never seen him this paranoid. I mean, it is kind of funny, but I don't, I don't think it's very healthy for a guy that age. Yeah. Well, maybe you should talk to him. Talk to him? Yeah. That's your advice? Talk to him? Uh-huh. You're welcome. You know, Laura, there's hundreds of people that I could have called for advice about this. Oh, Ben. You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. Hmm. Apology accepted. I should be grateful that you even considered calling me at all. You know, is this sarcasm? You know what? I'm so disappointed with myself. I don't even deserve to be on the same phone line as you. Yeah, that was sarcasm. Hey, Laura, let me ask you something. Yeah? Do you ever carry a fake wallet or hide, hide your money in your shoe? Fake wallet? Yeah, you know, just in case. What is a fake wallet? You know, a fake wallet is is something that uh, if you if you get robbed, yeah, it's a way of making the burglars feel like they've done their job. 
and at the same time saving some money. Where's the real one? Yeah, the real one you keep in a, in a secure spot. I know what you're doing, Dr. Katz, but you can't live in fear. Yes, I can. You're letting this attempted burglary thing get the better of you. I'm just being cautious, Laura. It sounds like you're being paranoid. Well, thank you. That, that's good advice. But what I really need to know is where can I hide my real wallet? How about Chevy? Hey, 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 never mind. You know who I hate? Give me a hint, Lou. My grandmother. And why is that, Lou? She's old and uninteresting to me. Mm -hmm. I don't really hate her. My grandmother, though, she, she, you know what it is? My grandmother's very, well, uh, you, know, she's, you know what? My grandmother, she is very spry, but her eyes are getting bad. And the best way to negotiate uh, her territory is to treat her like a rhinoceros. If you're upwind, stay there, because she will charge if she smells you. Mm -hmm. But you were telling me that she, she still loves to have the family over, cooks dinner for them. Ugh, every time we eat there, sometimes I do have this feeling, because she's a pretty good cook. I say, oh, if I don't get very sick later, this was good. What, what, what was your relationship like when you were a child? She, wrote, I used to, she used to bribe me for co correspondence. If I sent a letter, she would send me a dollar. And, I, and it was classic. You know how when you were a kid, you'd always break up in your piggy bank and be like, $19. Boy, I wish I had $20. Dear Grandma, how are you? I am fine. Bye. Love me. Mom said I had to make this a whole page, and then you write whole page really big so it takes up a whole page <laughs> um, what else do you know that in this country there's a, one home is broken into approximately every 15 mm. minutes so since I've been here approximately one home has been broken into which is not so bad it's not bad I have a neighbor who doesn't lock her door and she doesn't do it because it just doesn't feel good Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. What's her address? <laughs> you know, you've probably treated patients who've who've been victims of some kind of criminal act. So, I mm -hmm. mean, what would you? How do you deal with that? How, what do you? <clears throat> no, I do. I do treat people who who were traumatized in some way. What would you say to them? Get over it. Uh, uh, did you actually see the guy? Well, it was like seeing him. I heard the tapping sound. When you hear this at three in the morning, believe yeah. me, it's like seeing a guy with a mask. Ooh. Did Ben see him? Ben heard a different sound. He heard like this. <laughs> Maybe the guy was having coffee on the fire escape. Yeah. I can't believe I called 911 and they said it was a wrong number. How wrong can you be? Huh? Did you dial like N-I-N-E-1-1? -N -E -E I mean, that might have been the problem. <sighs> okay, you win. You're the stupidest guy at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Dad. Open the door. Uh, and who's there? It's me. Let me ask you this then. If you're really who you claim to be, and who, I'm sorry, who did you claim to be? Dad, it's me. Open the door. What's your mother's maiden name? I'll be back in an hour. Ben, did you get the, um, did you get the sweet and sour pork like I asked you to? I did, yes. Anyone follow you? Dad, when are you going to relax? When this, when this beer kicks in is when I'm going to relax. Oh man, this is crazy. Let's. I Dad, think... why don't we just sit and eat? And uh, you know what? There's no possible way that we're going to get robbed again. I'm thinking about maybe moving to a gated community. <laughs> you know, see, that's that's the problem. You get paranoid about yeah. this, and then you can't live your life normally ever again. Uh, you know, the cops suggested to me that it might be an inside job. So, how well do you know me? I mean, it could have been you. It's possible. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking about getting a second peephole put in the door, waist high, just in case someone small comes calling. Mm, that's a good idea. You know, for a minute, I thought you, uh, you were going too far. Why don't we get a phone book and we can just keep the peephole we have? You're afraid of small people now. Is that it? Well, every scary movie I've ever seen involves a, a midget that kills. Like what? <laughs> Name any movie. Um, midget Killers? They've got them. Yeah. Too small to let you live? I'm small and you're dead. If you lift me up again, I'll kill you. There's a million of them. Look down. Now you're dead. Dad, you know, the attempted robbery was like a week ago. Yeah, look at this. They have eight different kinds of pepper spray then. Really? Yeah. Can you put it on food? I think. Yeah. Because I like the hot stuff. 
There's one with a grounded pepper spray. <laughs> That would be a good way to do it. You pretend you're putting some of this grounded pepper on them on their food, yeah. the burglars. <laughs> then you whack them over the head with the big thing. Right. They, they have to have food in order for that to oh, that's right. work. That's right. Well, we, we put out a spread. You know, Dad, I can't go on living like this. Maybe we should, uh, you know, go to the other side. You know what I mean? You're talking about, about starting a life of crime? No, I think a life of crime would be rather romantic, don't you think, Dad? Well, what kind of criminal do you, do you see yourself being? You know, you watch all those movies... Like Butch Cassidy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'd like to rob a stagecoach. Yeah. They still have those? No, that's my point. You know, we'd be, we're already out of work. What do they use now to transport people back and forth? Uh, airplanes. We should rob one. No, but you know what? I really want to be in a situation, though, Dad, where we pull a heist, mm -hmm. and I get shot. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. And then you have to take me to one of those uh, guys who aren't really a doctor, <laughs> but... Who could sew me up, like, uh, across the border? A seamstress. <laughs> a tailor. Right. You know, a guy who has to bring me in his back room with no anesthetic, give me a slug of liquor, and then <laughs> sew me up, and then I'd die. <laughs> All right, bad ending, but interesting life. Sure. Let's go to bed, and we'll leave the windows wide open. <laughs> you got it. You're crazy. You know, as long as they're going to rob us, we might as well get some fresh air. Yeah, you feeling yeah. better now, though? Yeah. Why don't you give your old uh, son a good night hug? All right. There Come here. Go. Get over here. I got gotcha. you. Yeah? Okay, now put me down. All right, good. Okay. Now, what's this? Stole your wallet. Oh, uh -huh. man. <laughs> you suck. Yeah, check. Look inside that wallet. Wait, what? Fake wallet. Nah, you got me. <laughs> when you're good, you're good. Oh, Dr. Katz, I was in uh, the Seattle airport, mm -hmm. and as you're walking to baggage claim, they have this nine-panel depiction of a magic act. It's painted. I mean, magic is already boring, live. You know, even if the guy's right there in front of you, you know, the most you're going to get is like, oh, wow, that is my card. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. But to paint a magic act i can't it didn't make any sense to me but it it works actually on some weird level you do get emotionally invested in it because you start off and the first panel is you know this guy is dressed as a magician and he's got the disappearing box and you see his assistant and then you you progress down the the wall there and uh and you see that the guy gets in the box and there are no wires and he turns the box and then the next panel is the box is being turned again and then the very last panel is the box being opened up and the guy has disappeared. Hmm. And and you find yourself really fascinated. Like, how did they do that? That's amazing. And you run back really quickly and you watch it again. You go, okay, yeah, there he's getting in. And clearly there are no wires and I don't see him. And then he, the, you get there and it's like, yeah, the guy's gone. He did it. So, Dr. Katz, I had a, a great Easter. Um, and I was thinking... You know, it's celebrating the ascension of Jesus into heaven. Yeah. And I was wondering if when Jesus was rising up to heaven, if you had grabbed onto his leg, could you go up to heaven? Hmm. And you could be up in heaven. You'd be like the first guy in heaven. And Jesus, maybe he would like shake his leg. But if you had a firm grip, you'd be right up in heaven with Jesus, hanging with Jesus and God. And they, you know, he'd walking on clouds, they couldn't let you go. You'd no. be up there. It'd be so neat. That's what I would have done had I been an apostle. You know, I was wondering when Jesus was ascending into heaven, um, do you think his ears popped? Good chance. Hey, but also, what if you were on the ground when Jesus was ascending, and then you suddenly remembered that he had your keys? That would have... Jesus! I have my keys! Throw down my keys, please! Jesus, listen! Before He's going too high. He's got my keys. My keys! My house keys! They're in your... Oh... You know, Doctor, I'm so self-conscious. One time I, I was with a person. You, you seem to be great at this. You, you know, people come in and tell you all kinds of boring things, and you never even yawn or anything. I, I, I was listening to someone talk. I was having lunch with this guy, and he's talking. I got so bored, and I yawned, and yeah. we just started the lunch, and I... I had to pretend that that was how I talked. I'd be like, oh, yeah, anyway, oh, it's good sound. So now he, he thinks you're alert, but an idiot. Yeah, every time he calls, I have to go, oh, yeah, well, anyway. I'm I wish I could be more confident. You know who I admire? Who? The sixth grader who had sex with his teacher. Ah. That kid must have a tremendous amount of self-esteem. I mean, I wouldn't even look my teacher in the eye. 
Can you imagine this kid? What confidence? I mean, she says, do you want to stay after school? I'm sure the kid's saying things like, I don't know. Depends. I'm supposed to play soccer, but I can move some stuff around. What, uh, what do you have in mind? It's weird. You know, kids are, in t- terms of development, every month is critical. Like a six-month-old can do things that a three-month-old can't, and a, a, a one-year-old can do things that, that a nine-month-old can't. It's really weird. You, you know what the truth is, doctor? You never make up that difference. That's right. My friend Steve... He was born uh, in April. I'm born in July. He's a little bit better reader than I am. Oh, you know what the music means, Lou? Our time is up. 